we will talk about the this uh, uh, what are the re new requirements that emerge in the microservice security and what is the role of the IAM in the microservice security architecture. So let's start from the beginning. Um, so the microservice architecture is about uh, developing uh, application uh, as a collection of small independent services. So uh, not only the uh, application development and deployment is going to be independent, uh, application runtime or the execution also going to be totally decoupled from the other services. So, um, so usually it has its own run, separate runtime for each of these services. So microservices is driven by its uh, key goal, uh, speed to production. So one should be able to introduce a, a change to a microservice and um, test it and instantly deploy it into the production. So if you think about the monolithic applications, the traditional application we develop, so, um, so all the separate components, so the modules we develop for the uh, normal applications are deployed in the same application server. So um, in the normal application server, you only have very few entry points, like uh, probably a HTTP or HTTPS endpoints that's uh, uh, receiving all the uh, incoming requests to the uh, application server, and uh, based on that, uh, you have different in internal components executed. So, um, so you have to deal with very few entry points, and uh, so those entry points can be uh, intercepted in a central manner, and uh, you could enforce authentication and authorize security aspects. So, um, so usually these uh, application servers provides uh, session management capability. So, uh, so the uh, different components that uh, deployed inside in the uh, application server can use this shared session. Um, and if you think about the uh, component to component or the internal communication among the modules, it happens in memory. So, so there is very low cost on uh, uh, internal communication. And also, you don't need to uh, that much worry about the security aspect or uh, authenticating and authorizing user for the uh, calling uh, as, uh, party for the authentication. So even with the monolithic applications, you, have to, you may have to integrate IAM system, basically. So there can be different business requirements, like uh, so you have in your application, you may have to provide strong authentication, like Sagar earlier mentioned, or um, so integrate with the different social providers. So, uh, Having the application developer to uh, de develop all these uh, requirements is not uh, like uh, it's not feasible. But basically, there is to have a different uh, expertise. So you have to invest a lot of time and people or resources to uh, do by the uh, application developer itself. Rather, you can use uh, like a, a, a IAM system to uh, delegate or offload this uh, requirements from the application developer. So basically, uh, from the interception point, you could uh, talk to IAM system to do authentication and authorization, and IDN system can uh, uh, address all the all strong authentication or the adaptive authentication or the, uh, integrating with uh, social providers, uh, similar requirements, and uh, uh, give back the user details once the if the old authentication and authorization are completed. So, uh, so the application uh, server just need to uh, create a uh, shared context, user context in the inside, so the, all the components can uh, uh, get access to the user context uh, regardless of how the user is authenticated and authorized. So, if we compare the monolithic application with microservices, so microservices. Now we'll uh, deploy it in, uh, so the, all the uh, internal components, we uh, talked about the monolithic application. Now in the microservice world, it, it might, it's uh, going to be deployed and running as its own runtime. So, um, and uh, to uh, talk to each microservice, they will have their own entry points. So not just like the monolithic application, now you have a, uh, different entry points to the system. So, uh, so uh, this makes the 
uh, a broad attack surface to the uh, external system. So the, and um, so if you think about the uh, microservices, so uh, now you don't have a central uh, entry point that can be intercept or enforce for the security screening. Rather, each of these microservices you have to uh, engage enforce security. Um, if we think about the component to component or the uh, uh, service to service communication, now uh, since these are running on a different runtimes, um, microservice uh, internal communication within the uh, application now happens over the network. So uh, you have to, uh, even for the internal communication, now you have to uh, do a security screening. So, so if we match, uh, adapt the same approach we done for the uh, monolithic application and try to match it the microservice world, so it would not be uh, directly match or the uh, or a, like cleaner solution. So basically, uh, since you have to do a use authentication at each microservice point, uh, entry the intercepting in the each microservice. Uh, so the, now the, all the components in your systems has to talk to the IAM uh, identity access management. So uh, this will become a, like a bottleneck for the identity and access management and also will be a performance and of course uh, uh, scalability issues for the, your system. So if we uh, go through the challenges of the microservice, so with the higher number of entry points, uh, you have a much broad attack surface, and uh, so you have to have a way to uh, enforce security for each of your microservice, and the solution that, uh, solution for this, uh, uh, do the security screening for the microservice has to consider the performance and scalability aspects as well. And uh, so, in the microservice world, like, you will have, a, like, uh, rather than the monolithic application, you have one deployment to maintain, but in the microservice world, you have uh, small, smaller, large number of microservices, like uh, thousands or hundreds of microservices now to be deployed, so, so the, there are deployment complexities as well. So, so if you think about the, um, so for a given microservice, you may have to install a, a, a certificate or a key uh, to microservice, or you might have to uh, configure tokens that that microservice calls to the external parties. So uh, there should be an automated manner to provision these uh, user keys, certificates, or IDs, uh, and also has to consider about the uh, management aspect. So basically, let's say if you are configuring a, a token that that microservice need to be talked with. Like, let's say if, we, if the microservice is talking uh, GitHub to get some details, so, uh, so you have to have a GitHub uh, uh, access token. So that access token has to be uh, renewed or revoked or depends on the certain cases. So the, in the deployment wise, you have to uh, manage those aspects as well. And uh, depending on the uh, problem that you are solved, so different microservice might be developed on different technology stacks. So any uh, security process or the methodology you introduce for your uh, organization has to address or has to uh, work with all these technology stacks. So if we say like, uh, uh, for example, if you took a static code analysis approach, so if you do a static code analysis, so, uh, so you have to have uh, consider the, whether that tool supported the all that uh, languages that you are using within the company. So, so with all these challenges, uh, there is a question like, uh, so with, will the current IAM will become obsolete? Uh, in fact, it does not. So basically, current IAM solves set of actual business requirements, as we talked earlier. So it need, uh, there is will be a business requirement to enforce uh, strong authentication when accessing particular resources. So if your company grows, you will uh, encounter with the uh, merging and acquisitions uh, likewise. So 
Um, so there can be a situations there where, uh, so if you are using a customer facing application, you have to enable social login and so forth. So the, uh, the current IAM systems has uh, various set of functionalities uh, catering these business requirements. So those still needed. And uh, so what's become prominent is the access delegation uh, aspect. So, uh, so the, uh, with regard to the microservice, access delegation become more uh, critical functionality. So if we think about the core fu fundamental problem, so here we are talking about uh, exposing secure endpoints, so exposing having uh, protected resource. So likewise, I said uh, access delegation is a uh, common approach to uh, solve the, uh, ex or try to expose the protected resource. And the, uh, in regards to access delegation, O2O oh, oh is a, like a well, use standard in the industry. So if you think about how O2 works, so, so this, uh, here the, now the authorization server or identity provider is taken care of um, doing heavy lifting of like uh, addressing the different mechanisms of getting use authenticated and uh, getting the necessary authorization. And it will generate the access token and from the client you just need to attach the access token to the protected resource. So basically, in the microservice level, you just need to uh, validate that uh, access token uh, call in the authorization server. So, so in in this manner, like uh, so, you, in the microservice or the uh, resource server level, you just need to do a very minimal uh, operations. But uh, so still, you can. Uh, get the use authenticated with all the necessary business requirements and uh, microservice also uh, get the user details out of the call in the introspect endpoint of the authorization server. Uh, one downside with this approach is to, uh, so with the every uh, request to the microservice, it has to invoke the authorization server. So this becomes, uh, uh, performance issue because like for each request comes to the microservice, you have to call an external party. So in order to avoid that, uh, you could use uh, self-contained access tokens. So uh, like the OPAC or like uh, reference token that used earlier, so you could uh, have author your authorization server can generate uh, access token that uh, user information em embedded into the um, uh, access token itself, so the microservice just need to uh, validate, uh, do a signature validation, and get the user details internally, like without actually calling into a separate outside system. So one prerequisite is in this approach is uh, to have a, like an initial trust bootstrapping in place. That means, like uh, in simple words, uh, you need to uh, get the public key of the authorization server and place it in the microservice to do, do the signature validation. But uh, as I said earlier, like with the microservice world, like, um, so all these uh, uh, deployment aspects has to be automated way, has to be done in an automated manner. So if we look at in high level, uh, uh, what are the different areas in microservice security? So secure deployment, Secure, so secure development and secure deployment, and we uh, simply discuss on the secure endpoints, and fourth aspect is the service, service, service to service security. So secure development is about having your static code analysis, dynamic call tools, or the third party vulnerability uh, screening tools uh, integrated with your CI CD pipeline, where like uh, if you a developer introduce a, a mistake and introduce a security vulnerability into the code, so it will uh, instantly trigger and uh, notified immediately with a shorter feedback cycle rather than you are figuring out in the later testing uh, phase or uh, in your production. Um, when it comes to the secure deployment, uh, so the common pattern is to use a service per host approach. We are like, uh, so here a host can be a container or a, um, uh, a pod likewise, so, so basically you 
will have only one service deployed in particular host, and uh, so and you uh, do the security hardening on f for the that particular host. Uh, so like in this manner, so you will be uh, ensuring for a given service, it will no have impact for the other uh, different services in your deployment. So secure endpoints and service-to-service -service security, we will discuss a little bit details. So, oops. So securing one endpoint we discussed. So if you wanted to uh, expose this uh, microservice to external uh, uh, systems, so using the API gateway pattern is a, a common approach. So where uh, you offload the uh, security screening to the API gateway, and API gateway take care of uh, calling introspection or validating uh, self-signed tokens, et cetera. Um, so in high level, the overall flow works like this. So the end user authenticated against the authorized server, and the API gateway take care of uh, any token exchange, and downstream microservices can use those. So uh, using a centralized API gateway uh, could say as a, like an anti-pattern in the microservice, because like, uh, so if you are exposing the, all the microservice through a centralized uh, monolithic API gateway, it will deviate you from uh, true microservice aspects. So one approach is to mitigate this is using a micro gateway, so where like uh, uh, different microservices, so set of microservices uh, uh, managed by the same team have uh, uh, exposed through a micro gateway. So when it comes to the service-to-service -service security, so TLS mutual authentication is the common approach that uh, took earlier for the monolithic application, but it has its own limitations like uh, token revocation and uh, P rotation and trust bootstrapping. So there is this interesting uh, standard emerging called SPIFI. So it's SPIFI uh, solves the initial trust bootstrapping problem in a platform agnostic manner, basically. So it, it, uh, you could exchange the uh, uh, public keys uh, among the microservice or the workloads uh, in automated manner using Spiffy. So Spiffy has a uh, uh, couple of implementations. So Spy is its, its referent implementation. And Google Istio, which is a microservice a service mesh implementation of Google, also has implemented Spiffy. So, so Rather than relying on the uh, secure, uh, secure channel, you could use uh, message-level security. So uh, J JWT is a, uh, is a perfect fit where JWT can uh, usually uh, used to transport data between interested parties. So JWT has multiple implementations like JWS, secured, uh, sorry, signed JWTs or the encrypted JWT, so, so those can be used to uh, propagate or the, uh, transform uh, one's user identity or the user entitlements uh, in a secured manner over the unsecured uh, channel. So this leads to the concept of self-issued access tokens. So in the self-issued access token, uh, uh, source workload or the microservice, if the microservice A need to talk to the microservice B, so microservice A can uh, generate a JWT and uh, sign by itself and talk to the microservice B, and microservice B just need to validate the signature of the, uh, uh, the JWT that it receives based on the uh, trust that is established uh, beforehand. So here also the trust bootstrapping is needed, then uh, Spiffy can be a candidate to do the automated trust proof shipping. So let's uh, quickly go through the access control aspects of the microservice security. So, um, so Eclipse Foundation has came up with the uh, microprofile JWT specification. So it allows to in integrate uh, two attributes to the uh, JWT. So uh, the from the access control perspective, the important aspect is the group attribute. So based on that attribute, so basically, if you 
your microservice receives a JWT, with it's guarantees to have the, this group attributes. So you just can use that and do a role-based access control authorization in the microservice level. But uh, in this approach, so if we are uh, embedding the authorization rules to the microservice, it's not that much good approach. So in that case, you have to have a externalize the authorization policies because like authorization decisions or the rules are tend to get changed over the time depend on the business requirements. So centralized PDP again, like uh, uh, invoking a central PDP to do the authorization that again leads to the performance issues. But uh, you could use a embedded PDP approach where each microservice has so its own PDP and only centrally here it's handle the policy administration. So, uh, so the policy administrators like uh, so uh, can log into the administration console and uh, do any policy changes and publish that policy uh, changes to the some topic. And uh, relevant microservice uh, get that uh, updated policy and stored it in memory and. Uh, when a request comes, it evaluates these authorization rules uh, inside its uh, uh, container and uh, without calling any external parties. So, so there is an ongoing effort called Open Policy Agent. So this is uh, much with the embedded PDP approach where it provides a lightweight um, general purpose policy engine. So then again, it has different implementation. Again, uh, so Istio has um, have the capability of uh, using the open policy agents. So, um, so deployment is playing a crucial role in microservice. So let's say how uh, security aspects cover the, the deployment. As, uh, so, um, so I'll quickly go through the, the slides. So the Docker is a way to package uh, your application and Kubernetes provides a contain orchestration. And with the Kubernetes, you have the concept called pods. So this is an interesting uh, a level of isolation where you can group, uh, have a logical group for the multiple containers uh, in the same physical host. And this leads to uh, having using the sidecar pattern. So. Um, in the sidecar pattern, so you can see in the uh, in the worker node one, so there are two containers, container one and container two. So so one container one could be the uh, main workload or the main service, and the container two could be a sidecar service or the like uh, uh, enable uh, some pro providing a quality of service uh, to the main container. So if you think about from the security aspects of the sidecar, so so we discussed like um, so the from the microservice you have to talk to external uh, introspection endpoint or do a signature validation or run embedded PDP or do like trust bootstrapping based on the spiffy. Likewise, there are various uh, overhead comes to the microservice when it comes to the microservice security to achieve like uh, 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 it's to achieve like uh, without calling the external parties to do in an efficient manner. So security sidecar is a solution for that. So in the security sidecar, you could uh, offload uh, all this uh, uh, overhead to the uh, sidecar that runs in the same host. So there will be a very uh, performance impact uh, uh, calling the such uh, sidecar. So if you think about the inbound request, so um, so any request come to the microservice would be intercepted and uh, offloaded to the security sidecar to do the authentication or do the introspection or uh, validate the, uh, do the, run the policy engine likewise. So authentication and authorization will be handled by the security sidecar. And if you think about the outbound aspect, so, so if you wanted to talk to an external service, external endpoint, so the security sidecar can attach those tokens to the outbound request, so the microservice implementation doesn't need to worry about those uh, uh, security details. So, okay. Um, so what's the role so in the IAM? So, uh, so the 
in order to comply with the microservice architecture. So IAM should have a strong access delegation capability, so and uh, have uh, very flexible token exchange capabilities. And uh, so to integrate with security sidecars, uh, uh, standard uh, APIs for all these uh, identity and access management capabilities is a must. And it should have, if it is have a, like a lightweight STS capabilities, that's also a plus point. OK, uh, to summarize, so there are a lot of challenges in uh, microservice security, and there are a lot of new trends going on. Um, and uh, from the IAM perspective, it's a must to have like a strong access delegation capabilities uh, and strong API-driven uh, aspects. Okay, let's see.